Hi everybody, Craftsman Steve. In the last episode, you got to see me go to Cascade Tissue Group in Scappoose, Oregon and learn how to make toilet paper. Now that was a pretty cool day. I had a lot of fun and I got to meet a lot of skilled laborers who are really good at their jobs. And they got to teach me a whole lot of new stuff about, well, keeping things clean. So what keeps those skilled laborers going? So back in the 15th century in Yemen, they created this drink that we all know and love today called coffee. Now coffee has been fueling the workforce ever since. And I have a buddy who takes coffee making and transforms it into a work of art. Now not only does he do that, but he's a really kind of a smart businessman owning a coffee truck that will bring coffee straight to you at your job site. Now that's pretty ingenious. Let me give him a call, I'm going to have him come over, and I want you guys to meet him for our next episode of The Family Craftsman. Today on the Family Craftsman, I'm here with my good friend Chad Yarber, who owns Super Joe's Espresso. And what is really unique about this whole process is that he's a mobile coffee truck. Because every good working man needs a good cup of coffee. That's right. So first, let's have I'm going to have him show me the trade craft that's involved in making a good cup of coffee. That's including working this space shuttle like. Uh, whatever this is. Espresso. Espresso maker, <laughs> yeah. See, clueless. Put a piece of wood in front of me, I'll make it into furniture. This, completely lost. Uh, so I'm gonna have him help me learn this, and then we're gonna talk about how he got into this business as a small business owner. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, thank you. All right, let's do it. So this is my espresso machine. It's a two-pod espresso machine, so that means you can do two at, at one time. Um, a lot of times I don't have to do that because I just do it one, one at a time. Unless we're in events and we're really slammed, we can run both sides. Um, so this is what makes the coffee. Uh, we use Black Rifle coffee beans, which is really good. It's really robust, full-flavored coffee beans. Because our, our number one thing is to make sure that the coffee is the best we can get it, and then we'll add the flavor to it. Because um, if you start at a good base, then it's going to be good coffee. Um, next to it, the espresso machine is our bean grinder. So we basically, we put the beans in the hopper here, we turn it on, it, the grinds come through here, and then we feed it out here, like this. So the, uh, we put it in the, the, the filter there, and we'll pat it down, like so, and then we put it up here. She's ready to go. Okay. Um, and then we'll feed the espresso through there. So what is packing it in? What does that do to the beans? Uh, I notice you're stamping it in there. What does that uh, do? So basically that packs it in for more flavor. Um, if you make it all loose and everything, you could get granules and stuff that would fall down in there and it'd just be all messy. and You wouldn't get as much flavor in it as you would as if you pack it down in there. So basically what you want to do is you want to pack it. They call them pucks. So it's real nice and tight. Then the water, the hot water, will go through there into the shot glasses. Um, and it'll have a good dark uh, brown uh, color um, and flavor to it. And then once you, that's done, you take it out, you hit it into our receptacle here. Um, and it should be pretty hard puck. I mean, it's gonna crack or uh, break open, but it should look like a little hockey puck. Oh, okay. if, if it's too runny or soupy or anything like that, then it's, it's not gonna taste quite right. Okay, so you've got your puck Yep, already in there. Ready to go. And now it's my turn to make a puck. So right. use this guy? Yep, use that guy. Put these and put it here. Yep, set it around there. Um, put it up any particular way. Or just, just nice and level and flat. Okay. It's going to fall right through there. All right. So you pull this lever, um, just go about three quarters of the way, a little bit more there. So it's like that. Yep. Yep, there you go. All right, then I just stamp it down here. Stamp it down, that's it. Nice and firm, nice and level, there you go. Looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, and then basically there's grooves in here you want to sit it up in and make sure it's seated right. Yep, nice and firm. Let's see. Oh, there's a little cock guy. Oh. There you are. Come in. <laughs> there you go. If you get a cock guy, then it will definitely spill over and there's going to be a lot of grinds that come out of there and stuff. Yeah, so. No one wants to chew their coffee. So uh, push down on that guy and let it go. We'll just... I don't know, I mean, it's a pretty good cowboy coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Put a fork in it and it stands out. Right. Uh, 
in the military, you don't drink the coffee, the coffee drinks you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. You know, I had a uh, gunny one time who actually used to put uh, dip grounds in his coffee. Oh, man. Brewed a whole pot, and that way no one else would drink it. I don't, I don't recommend doing that. Yeah, it was absolutely terrible. That's great. I know it clean you out faster than prune juice, I'll tell you. There were a lot of my sergeants that I was with, they lived on coffee and cigarettes. Yes, that's, uh, I think that's a military... Uh... So when you're doing this, this machine, when I first started, it takes probably two to four minutes, depending on how cold of a day it is, to warm up. So you get the pressure up here. Okay. And then, so it's about right. Once the pressure's good and it heats up right, you see this foam right here? Yeah. On the top, that's what you want. So it's almost like a Guinness. Like yeah, a, like yeah. a stout beer. So as, as long as it looks like a mini Guinness, you're good to go. So right. so those are two shots that we're ready to go with. Okay. Then we would come over here. You can leave those there. Since you're getting the Deadpool, yeah. so we're going to put dark chocolate in it. And depending on the size of the cup, is this the, the, the quantity you want. Okay. Do you like a lot? No, no, that's fine. I think that'll be enough. I'm going to put some... Uh, I like pepper in my bedroom, so... Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, what is this? The uh, the rainbow unicorn. Rainbow unicorn. Right. <laughs> oh, no, that trick comes later. So that trick comes later. Okay. Okay. So we have the flavors in there. Sometimes people will put other like Irish Brie or hazelnut or vanilla, and that's when you put the pumps in there. Okay. Uh, so just put in the flavorings, and then you got some cream milk. Uh, so this is two percent milk. Some people like half and half. Some people like cream, uh, almond milk, coconut milk, soy milk, whatever you want. Honestly, I'll be I'll be dead honest here. I never drink anything but black coffee, maybe a splash of cream, yeah. for years and years and years. Yeah. And until I got to go to my wife and she started bringing home these lattes, mochas, and stuff. And I I'll have to give up my man card, but uh, well, you know, they're, they're pretty okay. good. They're, they're pretty okay. good. Uh, yeah. So if you want to reach into that uh, refrigerator right there, that's that, and there should be in the middle. Wow, this thing stays cold too, huh? Oh yeah, it stays real cold. Um, so while we're doing that, I'm just gonna bring it over here, let that foam up, and it's it's basically just heated like hot steam that heats up uh, all the milk. So the steam just kind of makes it frothy, right? And, and kind of adds air into the. Uh... And depending on how you do it, like right now, I'm making a full mocha. It's just steady. Um, it's not going to foam it up too much, but if you bring it down to the edge here, give it a little squeeze, I guess you call it. That would make it a little bit more frothy, more like a latte. Okay. So it's more foam, more latte, uh, less foam, just more milk. Okay. Learn some news, yeah, I wouldn't know that. Uh, and then we got the gauge here. Um, I usually put it up to about the red, which is about 160, because it's cold right now. It's, it's winter. In the summer, I, I go about 140, 150 degrees. Okay. Except for my wife loves it. Like at 180 or something. It's, it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's fun, it's fun. But that's the way she likes it. So. Right? Teach their own. As my wife always says, don't yuck someone else's yum. So there you go. That's right. Exactly. If you like to burn off the taste buds, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so now it's in the red. Turn her off. Um, get yourself a, a wet rag here. Uh, wipe that down. Let that go. So for the next one, it's, you don't have crud in there. Yep. Uh, you want to try it out here? Yeah. So I just pour it right in. How much of it do I pour? Um, well, hold on a second. We're gonna put the coffee in. Oh, we gotta do the coffee. Yeah, so just grab your shots there. Let's do here. Oh, there you go. A little okay. easier. Yep. Nice and easy. There you go. Good. And while you're doing that, yeah, just nice and nice and easy. Pour yours in there. If you want less foam. Put the spoon up to it and kind of use it as a screen to where. Here, I'll just see. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, you're doing good, man. Yeah, keep on, keep on trucking. That's how you got it. Right. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's a perfect pour right there. That's right. Perfect. Now, take your stir. Stir it up. So this gets all that flavoring throughout the coffee. Yep, mixes it all up. Cool, that should be about right. And now you see how it's got like micro foam, kind of like a Guinness again? Yep. That means you did it right. Oh. That means it's going to be a good creamy yes, style mocha. 
Oh, it looks delicious. It smells good. Oh, yeah. I have a friend that always asks me, do you ever get tired of oh, the yeah, smell of coffee? coffee? No, you don't really. No, never. It's, it's ludicrous. It's great. It's awesome. <laughs> okay. So, while we're sitting here drinking this delicious coffee, do you want to do a, a coffee truck? Like a delivery coffee truck? Uh, so, it was kind of the combination of two ideas. My idea, uh, I've always wanted to do like a bar or maybe a cafe, but do a superhero theme. Because I love superheroes, I love comics. I'm all about trying to be a hero for other people, sort of thing. You know, it's, it's, I know it's corny, but it's something to look up to. I think I think every uh, <laughs> every little kid dreams of there you uh, go. being I a never lost that. Right? So. Hey, you know what? Staying young is always best. There you go. Uh, and then I, when I met my wife, uh, we got to talk, and she always wanted to do a, a mobile espresso truck. When she was working, um, she was working multiple jobs, and she couldn't leave either of them. Uh, she she thought like, what if somebody just took a coffee? Too? Would that be amazing? So she came up with this idea of a mobile espresso truck. And we combined the two ideas of my superhero and her mobile espresso truck, and we came up with this. We found a, an old uh, a cookie delivery truck that was gutted. So we got all the equipment. We bought that. We installed it with the. Uh, so myself and my now father-in-law uh, put it all together, all the electricity, all the piping, all the uh, 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 units and all that stuff. Everything's bolted down to the mobile. Right, this, yeah. You know, it's not going to fall off. Yeah. We've gone over some pretty rough roads. Yeah, we hit a speed bump. <laughs> right, so we got, it took us a while, but we, and we've never done it before. I've right. never done electric, electric, electric work. And I see you guys. You guys can't see this, but there are literally conduit. Yeah. That, I mean, you did it right. You you put the conduit around the wires and all that. Yeah. And I mean, it's all up to code. This is really nice. I did a lot of research, a lot of asking questions, and then once I was finally done, I mean, I had a, a buddy come down from Seattle and help me too. That's kind of done stuff like this before. Uh, but once we were done, I had one of my friends that is an actual electrician come in and take a look at it before we kicked it sure. off. Yeah. He said, we did a great, we kicked it off and everything's been going good. So, so one, uh, of the, one of the things you got to think about if you ever do want to uh, start your own business is, exactly what talking about, it's the little things like making sure the electric's right, it's making sure you have all your permits because there's probably yeah. city permits, state permits, all that stuff. And each town is a different license too, so you got to make sure you have a license for each town that you go through. Uh, and then you've got uh, your health uh, code, uh, and then you've got your food handlers permits, you've got all the fuel, all the insurance, all the, it's, it's not just, hey, I'm going to throw some Folgers coffee yeah. in a van and drive down the street. You get a good idea and you're like, oh yeah, we can do that, and then you start diving into it and you find out, like you said, all these little things, like, okay, now we got to figure that out, okay, okay now we got to figure that out. It adds up. There's a yeah. lot of problems, but when you love something, you have passion for something, you figure out a way. Absolutely. And we know that. You're Absolutely. A too, so. Right. And uh, and I know we talked about this before uh, another uh, day, but you know I think one of the great things I see you doing all the time. You know we're we're actually friends off screen and, and on screen here, but um, one of the things I see him do with his company all the time is really uh, help out the veteran community and. And that's something that I, th I think that's probably where we, we started to become friends. I do right. the same thing. Uh, we, we live in a community that's got the highest per capita of veterans in Oregon. Yeah. And there's a lot. There's a lot. A lot of veterans and a lot of foster children here in this county. And something that we both try to do is, is help out our communities in, in those aspects. I think as much as we can. Yeah. And I think that's uh, where I was going with that was I think to be a small business owner, to be an entrepreneur kind of goes hand in hand with being a philanthropist. Because it, to be a small business owner and really try to take care of your community, you have to do just that. Yeah. Take care of your community. Because the better off your community is, the better off your business is going to be. Correct. And vice versa. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think that's just something fascinating that I've found over years of, of being you know, in my own business and, and having friends that own their own businesses. It's, everyone's the same. Yeah. We're all the same. We're all big dreamers. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes those dreams don't work out, but uh, more often than not, especially with the military uh, business owners, yeah. we tend to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. You figure out a way. You adapt yeah. and you overcome. You yep. Know? Yep. And you, you, I found too, like, it's not just you're going out and you're doing stuff for yourself and your business. You do almost as much work. 
for those people too. Yeah. As you do as you you work in your business, so yeah, no kidding. Sometimes um, it's tiring, but it's so so worth it. Oh, it is. It is, and you know, especially when you got kids that are growing up in this community. Yes. In your community, you just want, you want nothing but the best yeah. for them, all their friends, their families. You know, yeah. it's, just, it's a it's a no brainer. Yeah. And I think that's great.